Mills was super, super polite about it. He's like, it sounds weird. No shit. What you mean to say is it sounds like crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. The integrated microphone is going to yeah. sound like utter shit. I was like, did the normalization go? Oh, I hear what it is. Oh, man. Well, uh, so uh, I just want to start off with one with one very easy question. What was your... Well, I'm supposed to introduce everybody well, first, Mills. I just, yeah, <laughs> and wait for everyone I, to be in the call. I just want to ask how his day's been. Oh, okay. Well, we are recording. <laughs> Oh, I was not aware we were recording yet. How how is how, oh. how has your day been, Golden Fox? Been doing good? Yeah. It's been good. Solid. Yay. All right then. We're all ready to go? Yes. Most. Yep. Excellent. I barred right. the door. Do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> This is FNGR, and this is Limbo Podcast. Joining me this week as my co-hosts are Ryan Reno Mills. Darn diggly dang it, question mark. I know High Senshi. I am Postscript of the Bernie Crusaders, and I am going on record right now saying I had nothing to do with this picture. That picture is later yes. on. <laughs> and competing for the most Japanese-sounding name in the cast is Okizi. I already screwed it up. Okizama? Yes. There we go. Yes. Huh. Thank you. Hello. Excellent. And our guest and King of the Limbo of the Week is Golden Fox. Hello. Solid. No, no, don't worry. We'll get to that later. Assuming he hasn't seen it yet. Golden, you have no idea what we're talking I'm about. I'm afraid do you? not. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> be very afraid, sir. We'll cross that bridge. You are literally going to be the last person to find out about this. I, literally the reason the why I said I had nothing to do with it is because uh, FGR did not show me this picture until last night. Is it a, like, Rule 34 or something? No. No, it's not, not Rule 34, I, I, but... Well, no, hold it, hold it, hold it. If, let's put it to you this way. If Rule 34 is that level of sexuality, I'd put this number at maybe like a 20 and 8. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you... I have your interest, don't well, I? I'll, okay, I'll tell you this much. Even if it's like Rule 34, I'm not going to give a shit. In fact, there's... Oh, no, no, I, I, I shot it past Key first, and she's like, this isn't exactly what you said. I was like, is it in good taste? And she's like, it's in good taste, but it's not exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, like, I'll tell you this much, like, um, what's his name, Eon is uh, planning on doing a commission with uh, Sugary Violet that has me, Nikki, and others. They make a reference to, uh, what is that song called, Pour Some Sugar on Me by uh, Def Leppard. You know what, screw it, I'm putting it in. Uh, right <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it. We've talked about it way too much. Oh. Anybody listening by now is going to want your response, yep. so we're going to drop that in the room, and I want your honest opinion. All right. If he leaves. That's if I can <laughs> click the link. Skype is acting like a douchebag as usual. Ah. I'm not the only one. My, oh god, it was so beautiful when I dropped that oh. in the <laughs> <laughs> Alright, alright, let's take a look at this. Mm. Picture loads, and... Tommy Oliver loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I had that idea for a while there, and when I, 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 uh, I was, I snuck into, like, a stream that Key was looking at for, like, Rule 34, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm gonna throw a real ridiculous off-the-beat idea at her, and when she says no to that, I'll, like, send this, like, oh, and alternatively... <laughs> 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 how about this idea and she's like oh that's way better i'm like whoo thank god oh, i downloaded this picture immediately <laughs> this is just like <laughs> well it's like the anatomy is great the expressions are priceless and what goes on in the picture is just self-explanatory it's just i love it oh it's, yeah it's pure I'm art super key though because she's like one Who of my best this? friends <laughs> oh that that's great cat great cat that's, uh, okay that... Does he have a, like... Yeah, Grace... Sorry, who... Uh, does he have a DeviantArt? Yes. Oh, believe me, I'll put it in the description and I'll send it to you afterwards. <laughs> yes, I, I looked at his DA and I was like, okay, now I notice how you draw anthropomorphic girls. At the end of uh, Keyframe's podcast, I turned to him and I, I, I turned to Ino and asked, hey, uh, your OC is a girl. He's like, yeah. Hypothetically speaking, if she were anthropomorphic, she'd have breasts. Yeah. I turned to Gray, hey, we might have business here. <laughs> He's like... He's like, I think I know what you're going for. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I got Toon's permission to make a picture in the same vein. I have a couple ideas that I want to shill at him. <laughs> Great, and he'll probably bounce some ideas back off of me, and we'll, we'll come up with something good. But yeah, I intend to make that the thumbnail. It'll be really curious to see whether or not EQD features oh that Oh my god, Seeing now that how... I look closer, my character is drooling. Yes! <laughs> I noticed yeah. that. I noticed that a little bit after I stopped uh, talking to FNGR. I'm like, oh my god, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, beauty, uh... true beauty. This, this image got posted to the ranch last night, and I milked this, the laugh for this picture for all it was worth. Oh yeah. I, I said this like it's my can... desktop background, just so that every time I go to desktop, <laughs> every time I go to desktop, desktop, I have the best possible laugh. <laughs>
I kept sending that to people, and like later on, like a half hour into the conversations, and people were like, you know, it's still open on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, one of those sad you have people. To... Okay, the yeah. funny thing behind this picture is that to get one thing out of the way, I'm not big on breasts, so to speak. But just by looking at this picture, it's it's either his reaction to that or just the outfit that I know is wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, again, I'm I'm playing up. I, I think actually the, the person who captured what I was thinking of that was, believe it or not, anime wolf game. Where he's like, well, so many people are confused by the character's sexuality. He's like, yeah. And I was like, well, I don't mean to step out of line. I know, uh, I know you have a bit of a crush on Golden Fox. I was like, what if we flip the script? <laughs> And you were com- you were completely unaware that Golden Fox was crushing hard on you. That would be hysterical to me. I uh, had on, had no idea that was public knowledge. To be honest. Oh. <laughs> well, it is now. <laughs> Declassify. FNGR. Well, no, there Titanic was there was what I. Well, you're the one who, when I, I sent you a private message, I was like, how does it feel to know that more than half of the male populace in the Rift are going to be thinking about you later in an intimate fashion? And you took that, threw that right into the main room. I'm like, so that's what that feels like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was going to milk it for all it was worth. And that was, that was oh. too good of a laugh not to pass, or to completely pass up. Oh, I loved Munchkin's response. He's like, I wish I could draw like that. It's like, if you could draw like that, you'd have all my money by now. Jeez. <laughs> How do I go from this to educational goals? <laughs> <laughs> you just you just do it. Just do it. Speaking okay, which, Go- uh, Golden Fox, what are your educational goals? <laughs> my educational goals. I don't have any educational goals, unfortunately. Oh, no, that's perfectly okay. Uh, do you have any role models, anyone that you've looked up or uh, how that's maybe changed over What do you years? mean by role models? People who've inspired you in whatever uh, field that you're pursuing. They used to be, um, like, one of which used to be Roger Ebert as an influence to me in reviewing movies and such, as what kind of bridged my way into reviewing episodes, but as of now, he's dead, so oh. I can't look up to him all that much now. <laughs> You but, well, <laughs> you can look to his work for inspiration, I guess. Yeah, yeah of, of course. But other role models, every now and then I like looking up to Doug Walker and what videos he makes every now and then. And very rarely I look at James Rolfe's work in his movie reviews. Like, obviously he's known for the angry video game nerd, but I enjoyed his uh, movie reviews more. Because he's something a little more analytical and something a little more in detail. Like, he was so insightful with the Star Wars movies and such. Whenever it comes to the Burnalysis community, I think about... Uh, who is it like? Mostly Silver Quill and maybe Dr. Wolf. Lots of people look up to Silver Quill. Oh, yeah. I, I've yet to meet anyone, I, I think anyone other than someone trying to like be edgy saying that Silver Quill is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that, oh, that, that, you have a, oh, yeah. If you have a question, go ahead. That does that does raise the question. A, a question. This is a question I like to roll out a lot. What is a popular, <laughs> what, what is a popular brony reviewer that you just don't get at all? Why he's popular? I love how he asks that. Uh, that I'm actually going to think about because there's there's actually a couple of reviewers in which I admittedly don't like, but I know that that's for a certain target audience. So mm-hmm. I don't want to go and trash talk anybody or say anything bad to anyone. You're trying to get Goldie in trouble. Map, if you're, map, if, map if you're listening, <laughs> take a note. <laughs> Nap, Miss Anthropony. I've taken to I've taken to hyphenating the name so I don't have to say. Yeah, less we talk about him, the better. <laughs> excellent, excellent. What uh, favorite animation and characters? Favorite animation and characters. Anything specific? Let's go with uh, right now. What is your your favorite animation that's current, not canceled? That's not canceled. Holy shit, that's a good question. <laughs> Because I'm most... We go retro. Yeah, I'm mostly the nostalgic sort of person who likes to uh, look at much older films and such. Like, I mostly enjoyed um, the cartoon shows I grew up with, but that's just mostly nostalgia. From the current generation, I do enjoy MLP, but I also like... I've watched... I don't know if other TV show names would count. Steven Universe? I've watched that. Loved it. I still have yet to catch up on Legend of Korra, and... uh, I don't know what else to think of at the moment. <laughs> Growing up, were you more of a Warner Brothers or a Disney I fan? was like a I huge the... Disney fanatic when I was a kid. Oh, what was your uh, favorite? Rescue Rangers, Darkwing? Like Rescue Rangers, Darkwing, Duck. Boy, my memory's a little vague. There was just multiple Disney cartoons I just loved watching, period. I just didn't find anything specific, so to speak. Oh, yeah, we'd, we'd be here all, <laughs> all, all evening. Uh, like Hercules. I got, a, qu- I got a question. Yeah. Are you disappointed that Mr. Enter hasn't returned to Pony Reviews yet? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I 
I do respect the guy for what he um, does on his channel, and I respect his reviews. It is a little disappointing that he uh, hasn't been going around to doing MLP reviews, but, you know, I respect the guy's decision for what he's done, you know? I'm not going to, like, get all pissed off or anything. <laughs> Any classic movies you're into? Uh, something you grew something up with? Something I grew up with. I think what almost everybody would be on the same page on, Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> I'm, classic I'm, movie I'm hoping to, looking forward to add to that. Yeah, um, oh, but also a couple of, like, Disney films like uh, Aladdin, Lion King, and um, uh, Beauty and the Beast, and whatever others I can't keep track of. There's a shit ton of Disney movies. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it you're hyped that Disney's taking over the reins on that project. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, um, in relation to that, have you seen episode seven yet? Episode seven yet? Of yes. MLP? No, of uh, the Star Wars movies. Because Disney's oh, supposed to be oh, releasing Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen the trailers for it, and eh, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now. Like, it's kind of exciting to see that, you know, our original characters return compared to the mm -hmm. notorious uh, prequels you know <laughs> but that that's really all i can think of like what is the plot for this movie like what, what is this going to be about i did hear rumors or some confirmation that java the not java the hut baba fett, how do i get this name mixed baba up fett. baba fett yeah like he escapes the sarlacc and he returns impossible it, it's it's <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, no. Uh, we got yeah, somebody calling bullshit be one on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I was about to Sorry. say I don't want to be one of those book people, but this is one of those very few rare instances where I actually know, well, you know, that's not out of line for the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I got a question for you, Mr. Fox. Okay, go ahead. Kind of expanding on what Anthony said, uh, what is your favorite movie, period? Not just limited to classic films. I actually don't have a favorite movie, period. Like, it used to be The Lion King, but when I got older, I thought, you know what? There's a lot of other movies out there that are way better than that. And sometimes I like Pants Labyrinth, sometimes I enjoy... Like, I used to have a list of what my favorite movies were, and now I can't keep track. <laughs> uh, Back to the Future is another one of those movies I enjoy a lot. Right. And um, a movie I think is kind of underrated. It's like popular in other countries, but not so much in America. Uh, Watership Down. What? Oh, oh, I know that one. Really yeah. Good. I actually, yeah, I remember that movie. Love that movie. It was freaky, but I loved it. Yeah, that's, you know, actually, I'll tell you this much. That movie is the reason why horror movies never scare the shit out of me. It's because <laughs> of Watership Down. <laughs> Like that is, watch, that is me too. Yeah, like I'll watch A Nightmare on Elm Street and watch, uh, what's her name, Tina get slashed and then floated to the ceiling and everything and just be like, that's a pretty well done scene. But I'm not going to be like shivering under covers or anything like that thinking Freddy will come after me. It's like, <laughs> okay, I've seen it. Once you, once you see yeah. bunnies get torn apart, you never go back. Oh, it's not just <laughs> it's not just watching bunnies get torn apart. It's a fucking dog who's drawn like a freaking yeah. monster. You want to get away from that motherfucker. Jeez. Another one of those um, edgy, not necessarily crazy. dark, but another one of those animated okay. movies that were dark. They weren't. It wasn't necessarily as dark as Watership Down, but I think it's um, much more praised on the internet. Uh, the Secret of Nim. So, hmm, yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember partially remember it, the second remember one. I don't quite remember the first. <laughs> second one. <Yeah>. No. <laughs> oh yeah, that movie. No, that movie can go away forever. That was a John Booth, right? <laughs> John Booth. John, John Booth. Booth. Yeah, he John did Booth. the original yeah. uh, Secret of Nim, American <laughs> Tale. Blah 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 blah. We're too far off topic. <laughs> no, it's it's really okay. I do have a question though. Certainly. It's, it's a common opinion that uh, aspects of the furry fandom blur in with the brony fandom. What do you think of the specific different the, the specific things that differentiate those two fandoms? I don't know anything too much, but either or, you know, if one's a brony or if another one is a furry, you know, I just respect them for who they are. I don't it, intend to get biased towards anybody in what they do and such. I also noticed that when I said furry fandom, I said fandom like fandom. Fandom. I, I usually write I write it that way, like I'm because I'm a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to call me on that. But anyways, uh, no, there's a, a line here that originally got me in trouble, but I, I've been encouraged to continue with it. Dr. Wolf is famous for saying that he didn't want Rule 34 in the fandom. What's something you want removed from the uh, Brony fandom? Something I want removed? Yeah. Actually, I never thought about that. The reviewing community. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Like, Rule 34, like, I don't mind seeing. Like, I'll just look at that and just not even give a shit. <laughs> to be honest, I really don't like to go discriminate anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed... Uh, you have affinity for uh, retro games. <laughs> What's your poison, so to speak, in the electronic arts uh, right now? What's your favorite retro game right my now? My favorite retro game? If I were to narrow it down specifically, it's Super Metroid. Other games that used to be like close to number one would, uh, what was it, uh, Mega Man X? Like, I used to play that game just like multiple times growing up. But when I played Super Metroid, I'm just like, okay, that's taking the top spot for me. <laughs> yeah. But I also enjoy playing like other games for like other consoles and such. Like, I love playing DuckTales on the NES. And, um, you know, they remastered that not too yeah, I tried the 
game out and eh, it's okay. Like I, I admired its ambition to like modify a couple of things, Des- like redesign a few of the um, current levels. Like I played through the uh, uh, the Amazon one and I can see some more stuff added to it. What's disappointing, and this is just a, from a personal perspective, it's uh, it had like some kind of map view that actually gave you all the hidden areas and such. Like in the original, that was actually a part, like it was so mysterious. That was part of the fun. Like you found some hidden paths. Like, oh my God, there's a hidden path here. Awesome, I found this thing and I found that. And, you know, it's kind of like real treasure hunting. So uh, the original NES uh, managed to do a good job capturing the spirit of treasure hunting that you would uh, see the aspect of in DuckTales. The remake, it isn't bad or anything like that. It's just something that I wasn't keen on. It came with the Nintendo Power built in. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the remastered version, like I, I love that they managed to uh, stick with the source material and having like, uh, did they have the same voice actors? Yeah, they did. Okay, yeah. And they had the animation works that would feel a lot like the original cartoon and such. So it had a lot of ambitious into it, but I still like playing the original NES more. Okay, uh, so Super Metroid is one of your favorite games, and I believe at least several of us know about your bout against Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Have you beat that yet, by the way? <laughs> Super, you don't beat Ghouls uh, and Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> but I cannot have simply beat Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, one does all your gaming, and, and, and you seem to have, you know, kind of a kind of a certain taste for it. But what are your what is uh, your favorite genre of uh, gaming, or does um, it depend on your emotions? I think it all depends on my emotions, so to speak. Like sometimes I'll take on a hard game, whether it be Ghosts and Goblins or playing Battle Kid. <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes I'll just play like a platformer or a racing game, you know, whatever's just on my mind. What I've been struggling to try to get myself into are RPGs, and it's a whole different like genre that I wasn't too accustomed to when I was a kid, and that's just something I'm working on. Ever get back to FFC? Um, unfortunately, because I had to wipe my drive, I lost all the details, so I have to start all over again. Ugh. That is my favorite Golden Fox response. Guys, I'm about to beat it. Oh, where are you at? Oh, I'm at the Magi thing, and I'm like, you're not even halfway yet. No! <laughs> you- had a breakdown. <laughs> yeah, RPGs. Yeah, I don't think this game. Oh, RPGs yeah, have to take a dude. massive amount of time. They're sl- they're like hundreds or even thousands of hours. I think without grinding, that one's like sixty if you're gunning it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, RPGs can be really hard to get into. Yeah. yeah. Like I understand the appeal behind it because when you're playing the role of a character, you kind of imagine yourself as that character living the story. You know, they're RPGs from a perspective are kind of like novel sort of games that tell you a story and not just like pew 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 <laughs> if you know what I mean yeah. it's not just yeah, explosions yeah. you have to like actually have to pay attention to what the hell is going on yeah and it, yeah. it is a bit healthy for gamers to follow something up like that and it, it's kind of been an influence in uh, games today with like different kinds of cutscenes in current games like whether it be Gears of War or Halo and such what is your favorite first person shooter so we don't draw the ire of everyone in the comments <laughs> <All right>. so. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't played enough first person shooters shooter games the ones i remember playing were halo gears doesn't count that's a third person <laughs> uh what is it halo uh, reach and um let's see rainbow six Ooh. vegas and golden eye oh i was about Ooh. to say i was I'm, i was gonna recommend uh golden i was like this feels weird calling it a retro game but <laughs> it, it does, really is at this point well i was just generalizing yeah. in the uh, first person genre you know <laughs> uh, i think we gotta get you uh, in tf2 I, oh. I actually am, uh, i think i might be able to do that oh i'm sorry to interrupt my dad uh has a laptop it's a windows 8 and it's compatible enough for me to play like stream game, not stream games, Steam games. And I've tried a few of them out and they play a lot smoother than what I can play on my computer. So chances are I might be able to play some TF2. I have that okay. game. I have a couple of other Steam games, yada, yada, yada. And <laughs> awesome. yeah. Okay, so I got I got some. So okay. is there anyone in the analysis rift uh, that you haven't collabed with yet that you really want to? I think that all depends. Like, I won't lie. There are times I do I did want to do a collab with um, Firebrand, but knowing him... In a way, like, I don't know if he would accept or not. And almost oh, half yeah. the time, I don't even think about, like, how I would make the collab work. Let's see, who else did I not collaborate with? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a, it's, it not, don't really think about the logic behind it, just someone you, you want. If you, if you were to, if there was anyone in the analysis room, no doubt get with, no doubt have it be, have it work out good, who would it be? That's a tough question. I actually can't think of anybody who I would want to do a collab with. Because mm-hmm. I pretty much collaborated with a lot of the reviewers that I enjoyed. Oh, I Actually, now that I think about it, and why? Oh, yeah. Nice. Did you did you sign up for the season? I think I spoke to him every now and then of whether or not we would do a collab on season five. It hasn't been fully decided. Okay, there was a. a well, I, I managed to make it on there. I was just if you really wanted the spot, I could give it up to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
making the deal? No, no, no. I'm not, I don't need anything in exchange. All right. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention it to them offhand if you're interested. Okay. Let's, if you ever have kids, at what age are you going to let them online? Do you mean like introduce <laughs> them to YouTube? No, I mean I- the internet in general. At what age would you be like, okay, here you go, kind of. Like, you know, I'm going to give you some access to the internet. Um, I would probably have to wait around maybe 10 or 11. Uh, that's that's a, a bit more liberal <laughs> silver quill set, I think. Uh, <laughs> It's magic, son. <laughs> the internet is magic. Oh, it's perfect. Indeed. What's uh, something you'd like to teach your peers? Something I would teach my kids or peers, peers, your your cop, your the people you generally work in the same field as you. Um, don't get easily angry like I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, Rhino, you were about to say something. Okay, so sort of going back to the question before, not entirely, but when you headed out to BabsCon a while back, was that the first time you met Keyframe? And if so, yeah. uh, would you like telling us about that? In a in a way, yes. Meeting Keyframe for the first time was very exciting, and she and I, yes, she glomped me, and it was a <laughs> glorious moment. So was it was it the beautiful kind of hug where you know they kind of guillotine you on your shoulder, their shoulder, and you can't breathe? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky uh, duck. Kind of. Uh, yeah, I've had those. Those are amazing in retrospect. Not so much at the time. <laughs> Let's see. What's your favorite drink? Favorite drink? Coke. Oh, non-alcoholic. There we nice, go. Nice man. Okay, well, uh, if you're... Any... If, I have to ask. So if you're from Oklahoma or any of this region, Coke could be any kind of carbonated drink. So are you going to specify anymore? Or... I think he meant Coke. I would just or say just either... talking about Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola. Either regular oh. Coke or cherry Coke. Oh, Ooh, there we I go. like cherry Coke. <laughs> yeah. Love cherry Coke. I like them when they add flavors, so... Oh. You've been to uh, Babs. Do you have any convention horror stories? Convention horror stories. The schedule over there was badly organized that some of the uh, panels that were being planned out on certain days have been changed. Like, for instance, I planned on, um, originally planned on attending, a, what is it, SolarCon? And unfortunately, mm-hmm. it was supposed to be on Saturday, but they changed it to Friday, so I missed out on it. Yeah. All right. Those <laughs> bastards. Yeah. What makes what would you feel makes you stand out? You know, for example, like say this is a job interview. What I do best? Well, those kind of those kind of questions have always been a little uh, challenging, so to speak. My answers, mm-hmm. I just try not to be as as typical as everyone else. Like I'm always told to like use these terms, like I'm flexible, I'm eligible, and everything. Mm-hmm. But that's something almost everybody would say, and that, that's, <laughs> that's what makes it so to say it even. Yeah. So you're gonna say self-aware then? <laughs> I guess you could say. That. I'm also self-aware that everybody yeah. else is willing to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes my job. <laughs> no, no, you're golden, man. Exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. What's your favorite sport, if applicable? To play or to watch? Oh, let's go with watch. Um, football. There yeah. We go. There you go, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly where I pinched that from. And just to, like get some people upset, I don't like the Patriots. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Amen. If you had four more hours in your day, what's something you would video edit? <laughs> <laughs> Why, how many projects are you sitting on right now? I have about six episodes to catch up on, two of which is a premiere. I have a vlog from a convention that I have yet to make, and there are also some personal projects I've been wanting to do almost like a year and a half ago, and I haven't started yet. So oh, no, I meant like ones that are... <laughs> Oh, I, when you were sitting on them, I was wondering, like, how far in? Is there anything that you're currently, like, working on without going into specifics? Since- I have finished the cutie map. I've written, I have my script finished for, uh, what is it, Castle Sweet Castle, and I have written and recorded my voice for um, Bloom and Gloom. I'm still in the works of the next two episodes. What are they? Tanks for the Memories and Appaloosa's Most Wanted. What are your thoughts on season five? Season five. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, what are your thoughts on season five so far? So far, I think it's had a pretty good start. Like, you've got an opening that managed to do something a little different out of the ordinary and do it very well like you had everything work you had uh, an efficient amount of time that needed to be filled for a good narrative and characters the uh, the starter uh what is it the the uh, third episode they always call them the kickstarter episodes it was eh but i think it was better than castlemania you know preach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't hey, match my season audience four either point. like back in cal like castlemania they mentioned the key box again like is this going to be a season long arc and the rest of the season had nothing to do with the key box but no um <laughs> <laughs> Castle Sweet Castle had a bit of like a pretty decent start like you've got the chandelier and everything and showing like make new memories off of whatever new home you have and okay that's simple enough you know considering that the show is mostly how a slice of light base and I like that Bloom and Gloom loved it Tanks for the Memories it took a little while but after acknowledging everything I loved it Appaloosa's Most Wanted it's not a bad episode but there's just a few things I really really did not like about it so yeah, yeah. I actually kind of feel a little bit myself that they could have done that one a little different yeah so um, I think season five's had a bit of a good start, and if it keeps up, it might like 
outdo season two for me <laughs> as a favorite season. What's your favorite fan work? Favorite fan work? That's actually... Do you maybe a, a favorite fan animator or something like that? Narrow it down a little bit? I do like the two animators who did, uh, what was it, uh, Children of the Night? Oh, Jesus, that's one of the ones I don't know off the top. Yeah. Of you haven't seen it yet? Oh, no, I've oh, seen okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like, <gasps> you haven't seen Children of the Night? Okay, stop. You're going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was about to say, I know it. I, I don't, yeah, he was about uh, to get slapped On memory, I, I was going to guess it was Jan, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's not. But Jan, his work is also good, but he, I think he's got more than enough attention than he needs, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I do hope that the whole C and D thing gets much more settled and such. Have you uh, are reading any books right now? And if so, what's your genre? I actually don't read books that often, but there is one that I like kind of started on and I haven't got to in a little while. Mm-hmm. It's it's a book based off of a Disney movie. Go figures. But it's supposed to be a, the story about the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, and it's I think it's supposed to be like somewhat of a different take on the be uh, the Beauty and the Beast story, like from his point of view, and showing a few other scenes that were not really a part of the movie, so to speak, but has something a little long sighted. That's that's pretty much all I've read so far. I haven't read any other books lately. Like I've read books in the past, but just not as often. Uh, I have a question. Okay. Certainly. Uh, again, sort of expanding on what Anthony said earlier, instead of what is your favorite uh, retro game, what is your favorite game nowadays? Uh, any genre, you know. I can't really say too much because I haven't played too many current games. I did enjoy uh, Smash Brothers brawl but i can't really say that that much considering that there's a new smash brothers game to check out i love the uh, gears of war series and i did enjoy playing halo reach although the halo series hasn't always been my favorite you know yeah is there an instance that you wish you uh, could have handled something better uh, hindsight being uh, 2020 youtube or otherwise like i don't know uh, copyright strikes uh, yeah. argument in the comment sections a- anything uh, yeah. that just like well yeah, i probably should have done that differently yeah i think that well just anything in general i think I think um, sometimes I wish I had changed my attitude a little bit better during season four because I was a little like grudgy a little. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, because one of the reviews that I was unintentionally harsh on was testing, testing. And to me, I, you know, it's a really good episode, but there was just a few things I was skeptical on. And when Ellie was pointing out the things that she had problems with, it sounded like a negative review. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have a follow up on that one that I plan to work on and hopefully come to better uh, closure with it. I remember some of the epic arguments from the Rift about testing, testing that went on hours yes <laughs> a certain a certain someone who goes to say that i'm wrong for disliking something yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, i'm glad you're clearing that up though uh, Perfect. hi ben how you doing <laughs> <laughs> well i'm all out of ammo guys uh, <laughs> you got anything? i got i got i got some Okay. Uh, okay, Golden Fox. Mm-hmm. Would it be too much trouble for you to touch FNGR's right eye? You <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were going to ask I would that. actually back away. I'd just be like, what is that thing? <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> like, like, I, was, I was waiting patiently for the perfect time to spring it out. I'll get you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Jesus. I knew we should have just wrapped up right there. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, uh, I have a question, actually. Um, okay. What is your least favorite episode now? Like, I know it's been a few uh, seasons since uh, your uh, your first, I guess, really hated episode, which was uh, that really hard title to say. Super, Super Speedy, Speedy Slider, Slider Squeezy 6000. 6, it's still my least favorite episode, but I understand more of the appeal behind the episode. It's an episode that has a lot of style, but it a lot of things just rub me the wrong way. But if I were to include, like, other episodes that I really disliked, I have almost, like, a bottom five practically. Oh, yeah, um, until uh, Super Speedy, it used to be the Stairmaster. And most of the reason is because the CMC came off so annoying that I sometimes found them even more annoying than whatever it is that people were making a big deal out of and uh, showstoppers. Because in that one, they had this huge shout thing that was just aggravating. Just like, okay, I know that they're kids, <laughs> but do kids really need to be that, like, the CMC were just really annoying. Their little shout when they say, like, Cutie Marcus Sanders sleep over rarities. Like, thankfully that stopped, like, way later on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because that got very irritating. And also, I just found it very disturbing that Twilight got stoned and um, turned to stone in the forest <laughs> and just thinking, like, okay, that's there just for Shock Valley to show how threatening the forest is yet later in the series people just come in and go like nothing so i'm sorry but that's just no well they, they can't make up their mind what they want to do with the, the forest uh, ever yeah yeah 
But that scene was like, it was, I, I, I can appreciate like when MOP goes to take risks, but that was just too much. Like, I, I just had that feeling that a five year old would look at that and just immediately start crying. Like, okay, I have to call out on that one. But the other ones are, what are they? Uh, Rainbow Falls, Some Pony to Watch Over Me, and what is it? Just for Sidekicks from season three. Stereotypical yeah, yeah. asses at this point. They're a lot. Well, they are stereotypical. You, you look around. Yeah, they are stereotypical for a reason, though. Yeah. You can find almost everyone to bitch about any episode anywhere if you look. Oh hard yeah, enough, some so. people really can't stand Philly Vanilli because they say that um, it's a copy and paste of um, Hurricane Fluttershy. Not necessarily. It's just represented in a different angle. Like, okay, Hurricane Fluttershy is about paying a contribution. Uh, Philly Vanilli was overcoming a stage fright and showing your inner self of how good of a performance you can pull. Yeah, there's also the I, I forget the individual pointed it out, and he's like, you don't overcome. Uh, your, your anxiety and dealing with big crowds. Yeah, baby all, steps. All in one sitting. Yeah. yeah. Gary P. No, that wasn't Jerry. I really hated it, though. That, I didn't want to cite the person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's not Jerry. I swear to you, all it's right. not Jerry. <laughs> Is it Mr. Ritter? Um, he, he's a gentleman that used to be in the room. Oh, yeah. Yes. He, he watches Sky. <laughs> Blindly. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about, but I'm not going to say anything. Yes, I think it shouldn't be hard to figure it out from that. I'm not talking smack. I'm just saying that's that's the source. Yep. There you go. America. So we wrapped up, or yeah, America. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm tired of asking that question and getting shot down. Why is America great? I've literally had one of my co-hosts go really. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> I was like, okay. I'm, I'm saving that one again. Yeah, if, if, in the unlikely event, if I ever get scorched your eye, I'll be like, well, you're a military guy. You'll probably give me a good answer for this one. <laughs> right? No? Okay, well, I give up. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, uh, barbecue. <laughs> I've almost screwed up and asked Canadians that one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, as long as I'm not cutting anyone off, I'd like to say I think you were a great guest. I uh, had a great time. Yeah. Uh, if you ever want to come back as a guest host. Oh, and that's going to be a question oh, at the yeah? end of this. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yes, Golden? I did. Uh, I actually got Mage to agree to come on. Would you be interested in co-hosting for that one? Sure. Okay, cool. All right. That's two hard yeah. yeses. <laughs> now I just have to find anyone but Biter. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with that. I will. I will. All right. Uh, thank you all. Uh, parting words. Anything? Um. I will say, I will say, you're probably out of the two people that I've co-hosted on. You're probably the best. Okay. Yeah. Smiley face. Well, we had really bad audio. They're not holding that against uh, what's his name, uh, Watchful. Watchful yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah, he had a lot of bad. I, there I, I will just say, I, en- I, en- I enjoyed this podcast a lot. It was enjoyable. Yeah. Same, oh, yeah, same thing for me. All right, take care, everyone.